Hello people, I'm going to talk about inflammation and inflammatory conditions. So I want you to listen to this carefully. What is inflammation? Before I even talk about that, let me define the five cardinal signs of inflammation. We have increased temperature, we have swelling, we have redness, we have uh, pain, and the last one is loss of function. So if you have those five in your body or in your system, that is what is classified as inflammation. Now somebody will ask, where does this inflammation come from? Because naturally we don't, uh, we don't have these swellings and all this. I want you to also know that in our system, inflammation is a natural process that is supposed or that is aimed to help you in healing. So the body reacts to different uh, things in your system to just fight them and help you already be safe and receive your healing. So inflammation is a normal condition, but chronic inflammation is the problem because that means there is an issue in the system. So when you have an invading bacteria, an invading virus, or an invading toxin or toxic chemical, your body produces inflammatory cells, cytokines, prostaglandins, histamines, Macrophages. So these cells are the ones that are sent, or these inflammatory cells are the ones that are sent towards that microorganism to kill it and help you survive. Now sometimes the immune system overreacts and produces uh, uh, cells that will start fighting your own body cells. That is what we call autoimmune. That is what is happening in diabetes type 1. That is what is happening in uh, some thyroid conditions and some adrenal conditions and even rheumatoid arthritis. So those are still part of inflammation and we'll get to the root of that. Now, we've said your body is reacting to these toxic chemicals and where are these toxic chemicals coming from? Exactly what you eat. This is the reason why I tell you to avoid wheat products because of gluten and that is a new thing to the system so it will react. Seed oils which are high in omega-6 and that is highly inflammatory so your system will start are producing more inflammatory mediators. Sugar is highly inflammatory to the system and those are the foods that I always encourage you to drop because when I know when you drop that then your system will not have to strain to produce inflammatory mediators that will cause you most of the inflammatory conditions. Okay so these are just some of the inflammatory conditions that you might be suffering from but you have no idea. Number one is asthma. Number two is cancer. Number three is heart disease. Number four is stroke. Number five is rheumatoid arthritis or arthritis in general. Number five is type 2 diabetes. Another one is uh, Alzheimer's disease and also stroke. Okay, so these are just diseases that occur as a result of an inflamed system, whether local inflammation or systemic inflammation. So we will explain that. So if you have those conditions that I just mentioned, this is an adequate video for you. So how does inflammation occur in the system? I already told you when your body is exposed to these toxins or these bacteria or these viruses, then it produces a defense mechanism to help it fight it, fight that invading uh, substance. And that is exactly what we call inflammation because once that process is initiated, then you get into all these inflammatory issues. Now look at asthma, for example. So in asthma, you are given drugs to dilate your bronchioles, so to open up your bronchioles, that is the likes of uh, aminophilin, that is the likes of salbutamol, the ones that you people uh, always use, or franol, or most of you call it, uh, what is the name? Let's just call it salbutamol. So they dilate your bronchioles so that you breathe naturally. Now what is causing these bronchioles to narrow is because you are exposed to an allergen or an infection that is causing your system to produce histamine, high levels of histamine. And that is just the system trying to help you clear your airways. Now this histamine will cause inflammation on the bronchioles. Now remember the, four, the five cardinal signs of inflammation? One of it was swelling and the pain. So once you get that histamine in your bronchioles, then they will start to get inflamed. Once they get inflamed, you will produce a lot of mucus. Now that mucus is the one that will cause an occlusion of this bronchial. Also that swelling will cause narrowing of that bronchial. Now once you narrow that, then you start to struggle to breathe. Okay, once you struggle to breathe, then of course what do we do? We will give you a drug to open up your bronchioles, that is salbutamol. We will give you a drug to clear histamine, that is an antihistamine. We will give you a drug 
uh, to also clear the inflammation. That's why most of you have those steroid inhalers. Okay? And steroid drugs are the ones that end with O, N, E, like dexamethasone, prednisolone, hydrocortisone. Okay? That is what we is composed, or beclomethasone, that is what is composed in your inhalers. So you have salbutamol and combined with a, maybe a steroid. So using that therapy, you can easily go back and get the, 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 the cause of asthma. So the cause of asthma is in an inflamed gut and also systemic inflammation. And therefore, if you want to heal from asthma, the drugs are temporary solution. You need to work on what is inflaming the system. And that is what you're basically eating. And that is basically what is causing systemic inflammation and asthma. Look, for example, at heart disease. You consume carbohydrates and sugar constantly. And then this sugar hurts your blood vessels. Once it hurts your blood vessels, you get inflammation in blood vessels. You get the blood vessel walls starting to thicken. And then they start to narrow. Now it, is gets, it gets hard for you to pump blood into this blood vessel. That, that increases blood pressure. You, this blood is also carrying nutrients towards different organs and including the heart. So once this blood cannot get, the heart cannot get enough supply of blood because of that thinning of the blood vessel, then you, your heart muscles start to fail. That is a cardiac arrest. Okay, that is a heart disease or heart failure. And also when the heart is struggling to pump blood through these narrowing blood vessels, the, blood, the heart starts to expand. That is what we call cardiomegaly. So from that, you can easily understand. So you go for drugs that will help you open up uh, the blood vessel to lower your blood pressure or to help blood flow towards the heart. But you've not solved the inflammatory, the systemic inflammation. So that's the reason why if you solve the systemic inflammation, and this systemic inflammation is not being caused by cholesterol. It's being caused by sugar. Cholesterol just comes in as a way to help you heal from that inflammation because cholesterol is a compound that the liver sends to different organs to help in healing process. So that's the reason why you'll get high amounts of cholesterol in your system. Not because you're eating, uh, not because you have the cholesterol is harmful, but because cholesterol is being sent towards that organ to help you in healing. But now you'll blame the cholesterol and not blame the sugar that caused the inflammation. So cholesterol is coming in to help you. So, again, I want you to know, in your gut, we have a different composition. So if you inflame your gut, you'll inflame your system. And that's why I tell you to drop seed oils, to drop wheat products, and to drop uh, a sugar. Because those inflame your gut. And those processed foods, those inflame your gut and they will cause systemic inflammation. Those foods also, they change the gut population, the microbiome in the, in the gut. So in our gut, we have microorganisms that are healthy for us, that are supposed to help us digest food, that provide immunity for us. But there is a balance between the good and the bad bacteria. So when the bad bacteria overwhelm the good bacteria, then you get into diseases. Now, when you consume carbohydrates for a long period of time, your gut is filled with bacteria that only digest carbohydrates. So the population of the bacteria in the gut is altered towards the bad bacteria more than the good bacteria. These are the bacteria that send you into cravings and all that. Now, understand also, on the surface of this bacteria, we have something called LPS, lipopolysaccharides. So the bad bacteria have that lipopolysaccharides. However, this lipopolysaccharides is okay being in the gut. Okay, so there's no problem with it being in the gut. But once this lipopolysaccharides break off and get into the systemic circulation, it starts causing you systemic inflammation. And how do you get this getting into your systemic circulation? It's through those foods, the wheat products, the seed oils, the sugar. Once they inflame the gut, then these lipopolysaccharides can get a chance to get into the systemic circulation. They are attached to cholesterol and they start causing you systemic inflammation. So you can imagine if you fix your gut, how many conditions you're fixing already. There's a lot. And that's why I insist on gut health before any other health. Also remember there's a relationship between the gut, the skin, the gut, and the brain. So most skin conditions and most uh, neurological conditions hail from a messed up gut. So as we continue with the inflammatory condition, I've mentioned asthma, I've mentioned heart problems. Now look at the stroke. So again, the stroke, you are occluding blood vessels that supply blood to the brain. And therefore, brain tissue starts to die. And what is occluding these blood vessels? Again, inflammation of the blood vessels that causes swelling, thickening, and narrowing. Now, this is a problem because this is caused by sugar. And when I talk about sugar, I'm talking about sugar in all forms, whether natural or synthetic. Remember, your liver does not know the difference between natural and synthetic sugar. The liver knows fructose. The liver knows glucose. So do not lie to yourself that when I eat a fruit, I'm going to be healthy. Actually, fruits 
and the modern fruits to be specific the ones that are gmo cultivated they have high content of sugar these are the fruits that are messing up your systems and your doctors will always say that a fruit a day will keep a doctor away however they've just earned a customer through that statement for a lifetime because every time you consume that fruit you're consuming fructose fructose is a dangerous sugar to your system because it causes inflammation okay look look at arthritis those joints getting inflamed the pain the swelling the friction because your, your immune system has overreacted and then cleared the cartilage that prevents your bone from getting into contact with each other. And therefore, that friction as you walk creates a lot of inflammation and a lot of pain. That is the exact thing. So what is causing an overreaction in the immune system is basically what you are eating. So if you fix what you're eating, you recover from heart conditions, you recover from type 2 diabetes, from cancer, uh, from arthritis, from asthma, from skin conditions, from neurological conditions. All these are 80% of the conditions that we all go through. So fix the gut. And I've put up a video that already talks about how to fix a gut. So let's continue talking about where this inflammation is coming from. Because now we have the diseases and we have the cause being inflammation. And now we need to know what is causing this inflammation. Two things. Number one, a messed up gut. So we've talked about how to fix a messed up gut. When you drop those seed oils, when you drop that wheat product, when you drop that sugar in all forms, you drop that processed foods, then you start fasting, you fix the gut. Now that will also fix systemic inflammation. Because also remember, the number two reason why you're getting inflammation is because of failing adrenals. Now understand this. The adrenal glands are on top of the kidneys. These are the glands that are placed or located on top of your kidneys. And their role is to produce different hormones that help you uh, in maintaining the system. They produce hormones that help people uh, maintain blood pressure. And that's why when you have low blood pressure, then you must be having a problem with the adrenals. So that is aldosterone. They produce sex hormones, so they help in your fertility. And most of women who experience postmenopausal syndrome, it comes as a result of the ovaries failing because of age. Now the adrenals are also failing because they're the ones that will supplement the failing ovaries to produce sex hormones. So testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, all hail from the adrenal gland. So that is the reason why, uh, the reason for fertility. Again, they produce cortisol. Now, cortisol is a stress hormone, so it helps you fight stress. It also helps in regulation of blood sugars. That's why cortisol is produced in the morning every time you wake up. And that's why morning breakfast is useless because this cortisol helps the liver produce glucose and therefore your system will have high amounts of glucose in the morning. So you don't need morning breakfast. Push it towards midday. Then again, they produce uh, adrenaline, which is a fight or flight hormone. So you can imagine these four hormones play very important and uh, crucial roles in your system. So if you have failing adrenals, then of course you'll need an external supplementation of cortisol or of uh, this uh, corticosteroid, these steroidal hormones. Now, if you have a failing adrenal, do you know the reason why you're given diprofos for arthritis? Diprofos is a steroid. Do you know why you're given a hydrocortisone when you have asthma? Or a, or a skin allergic reaction. Do you know why you're giving this? Because the system already tells you. So from the drugs, we can know why we are being, we can know the cause of our condition. So if you're given a steroid, let's say that injection of a diprofos when you have arthritis, that tells you your adrenal gland is not able to produce enough steroidal hormones to help you suppress your immunity, which is overreacting and killing your own body cells. So we give you an external steroid. The problem is that external steroid comes in with a lot of side effects. And also that uh, incoming steroid will cause the adrenal glands to even fail more because it stops them. It actually tells them there's something that is coming from outside. So you don't need to produce uh, those uh, hormones anymore. So now the role of this adrenal is to produce hormones that suppress your immunity when you have a hyperreactive immune system. Now, because they are failing, your immunity will, will, will misbehave. That's why you get autoimmune conditions. And that's why I tell you, most of the times, let's say like type 1 diabetes, uh, most of you tell me that it's not treatable, but you look at the causes, you'll understand where the autoimmune is coming from, and then you fix the causes. So if you fix the adrenals, then your immunity, you'll not, your, your immune system will not overreact. And then I also want you to know that all these steroid hormones are synthesized in the mitochondria. So mitochondria is the energy mechanism of the cell. That's the reason why cancer hails from the mitochondria. Because if you have a failing mitochondria, you will not produce adequate energy for the cell. You will also not produce these uh, steroid hormones that help you suppress inflammatory conditions. 
So most of you who have inflammatory conditions, you have a problem with your mitochondria at the cellular level. And how do you fix your mitochondria? You drop those inflammatory foods. And then you start fasting because fasting, prolonged fasting actually, will take you into autophagy. Autophagy is basically your cells starting to clean up and using this uh, dead and this uh, dead and debris that is in the cell wasting a lot of space. So they convert it into active energy and the dead proteins so that you get energy and cleanse your cell. Also, when you're fasting, you after autophagy, you go into mitophagy. Mitophagy is basically the same same concept, but now it's the mitochondrial cleansing. So once you cleanse the mitochondria, then you start producing these hormones in the adequate ways. And that's the reason why fasting is advocated in uh, uh, inflammatory conditions. That's why fasting is advocated in metabolic syndrome and cancer. So because you clean the mitochondria, once you clean the mitochondria, you start producing these corticosteroids or these steroid hormones in their adequate amounts. And then they suppress your overreacting immunity. And then you start recovering from asthma, from stroke, from diabetes, both type 1 and type 2, uh, from cancer from heart disease, from brain failure, and stroke. So that is how you go about it. So now that you've fixed your gut through dropping those inflammatory foods and also fasting, now you're fixing your adrenals because also what kills the adrenals, foods that kill the adrenals are the same foods that cause inflammation to your gut. The seed oils, the wheat, the processed sugars and stevia, the soy products. Uh, the processed foods and processed juices and those fizzy drinks all these are the foods that are causing systemic inflammation both to the gut and also to the adrenals and then once you do that once you drop those foods and you start fasting and start eating healthy keto basically animal fat or fatty foods protein vegetables and cook them in animal fat because you've dropped the seed oils so once you do that now this is what we call healthy keto so you go on a low carbohydrate diet but high in fatty protein, high in animal fat, and high in vegetables. Once you do that, then you can combine that with the sun, because the sun is an endocrine stabilizer. When I say endocrine stabilizer, I mean it's a hormone stabilizer. So the sun is also important in your adrenal sufficiency. Okay? So get the sun. That is also a form of activation of vitamin D, and you need vitamin D for your immune system. So now, enjoy the sun. Start fasting. So fix your gut. Then fix the adrenal in, ad, adrenals through dropping those inflammatory foods, fasting, enjoying the sun, having sleep eight hours a night, exercising, and above all, vitamin A, zinc, magnesium, and copper supplements. So that is targeted supplementation. These supplements, you don't need to buy supplements though. You can get these supplements in foods. So like the liver, like the eggs and the yolks like uh, fatty meats, like avocados, like nuts, like vegetables. There is no supplement that is not in nature. Nature provides all these solutions. So if you're asthmatic, if you're diabetic type 2, if you even type 1 diabetes, if you have cancer, if you have any autoimmune condition like arthritis, if you have uh, inflammatory conditions like gout also, if you have uh, asthma, if you have skin conditions and neurological conditions, Basically, fix the gut so that you can absorb nutrients in the adequate form. Start fasting. Drop all those foods that I just mentioned. And then concentrate on healthy keto, fasting, sleep, the sun, exercise, and targeted supplementation. So these supplements, if you are unable to get healthy foods, you can buy these supplements. However, it's always better to get it from nature. So that is how you survive. But if you continue using drugs, for instance, drugs for asthma, they are only treating the symptoms, but they're not treating the inflammation. If you, if you if you go ahead and take those drugs for blood pressure or heart failure, the digoxins, they are only fixing secondary, secondary things. Those are the symptoms. They are not fixing the inflammation. So you need to fix the gut for you to fix gut inflammation and also systemic inflammation that is causing all those conditions. I hope this video is helpful to you. And if it is, kindly go ahead and press that notification button. Uh, the subscription button, press the bell so that we, anytime we have a brilliant health idea, you get it. Share it to those people who also require this information. And above all, thank you for the support that you're showing us in all our media platforms.